from the basement of La Penta, it's WICR. Hello, Iona College. Welcome back to Entertainment Overload with your host, Jersey Joe, and my co-host, Mr. Armand Made. Armand, very excited to have you back on the morning show. It's very exciting to finally have our name previewed on the show. There you go. You know, the Batman and Robin combination, the MJ Scotty Pippen combo right here. Entertainment the Overload. Vince the T Mac. The Vince and the T Mac. Entertainment oh, Overload. Man. It's got a nice ring to it. It does doesn't have it? a really good name to it. Credit to Joey for this one. Yeah, there you go. Well, we put our promo together. We're going to have a lot of nice oh, stuff man. to put in there. Some Godzilla stuff in there. After today, I'm sure we're going to have some nice stuff to put in there. But I'm very excited for this show. Kind of put it out there. Um, we've been talking talking about it this is kind of a special kind of show during the week this week is just a phenomenal week if you're a fan of comics you're a fan of the tv shows related to that stuff i mean we had air the the see the series premiere the pilot episode of flash last night you've arrow season three starting tonight you have the walking dead starting on sunday you have comic con starting tomorrow until sunday so it's a very good so we want to invite anybody you're a comic fan you watch uh, arrow or flash you want to talk about it drop by the studio you are welcome to come in we'll get your thoughts on it but right now armand and i we watched the show last night the pilot episode of flash armand as a newcomer you were i'm I, i'm really excited to get your thoughts on it so why don't you lead us off what did you think of the pilot episode of flash last night listen i honestly i thought the show overall was a great show yeah it was a very good show um, I like the guy Grant Gustin who plays Barry Allen. I thought he was He's a very perfect. diversified actor. Yeah, you know. And um, what's different from this show compared to other superhero shows and/or movies is that I like how he always has his father's back over 14 years. He, everyone was against him, but he stays true to his father and he embraces his relationship with his father and holds his name. Like he he doesn't he doesn't give in to everyone what they think about his father. He still loves his father for who he is and backs him up for that till his day. Yeah, I think that was a good point too. And like when I watched the first couple of segments of the show, like they showed kind of the flashback with him and mm -hmm. how that happened. I thought that was really cool. Um, overall, I just I really like the acting, and I mean, I think yeah. he's a really like good like because he's not. It's kind of like in the first Captain America where. He's kind of like that nerdy, kind of like frail guy. It's kind of this like with Barry Allen. Like if you picked him out on the street, this isn't really a I mean, he's kind of just well, a plain Well, after the lightning storm, he got abs. After he did get abs after the lightning storm. That <laughs> was like, whoa, lightning gave me abs? <laughs> <laughs> what did you think of the, the whole villain thing, though? I mean, you had the, the guy uh, with the like the thunder tornado power thing there. What do they call him? Weatherman or something like that? It's something like that, yeah. It, it was different. I mean, it was kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, I think they have to work on the special effects. I it, I think being broadcast on CW11. Yeah. Kind of. If they were on Fox, I think they would have more revenue and stuff to work with for special effects, graphics, et cetera, et cetera. You know what I mean? But CW11 yeah. is not as... You know what I mean? Compared to Fox, I whereas think, all the mainstream Yeah, TV I think shows. that's a good point. I mean, there were some of the parts where, like, you know, he's going in the super speed where you can kind of tell, like, this. it's not, like, maybe the best uh, special yeah. effects you've seen. But let's look at IGN. IGN, uh, usually, I mean, good site. You know, they do video games, comics, TV, movies, everything in that entertainment ec um, umbrella. So they gave it an 8.4. They said, great. Uh, the Flash starts off on the right foot as it builds a brighter, more outlandish counterpoint to Arrow. Um, their their pluses were Gustin comes into his own as Barry. Yep. As Armand said, I agree. A satisfying movie-like story arc. I did like that as well. DC cameos galore. Um, the one thing, I was watching this with my brother, and I talk about it all the time. He's, like, glued into this comic book stuff. He knows it, like, back the back of his hand. And he said that the show stayed very true to the comic. I oh, mean, it the, did. Okay. the origin of kind of when they showed the flashback with what happened to his parents. Um, and the the kind of how they're setting up the characters, he said, stayed very true to the. Are comic. all those people in the comics the ones that help him out at what's Star Enterprise? Star Labs, yeah. Star Lab, yeah. I, I believe so. It's like that guy and the girl, are they in it. Yeah. And the guy in the wheelchair. I think like in different um in the comics, I guess maybe they're different people or mm -hmm. the but I think there is like that group who always helps him out. What do you think was going on at the end where the guy gets out of the chair and he puts his hand on that like tablet? Thing? On the tablet, uh, potential. I mean, it's not a 
big spoiler there, but for people at the end of the movie, one of the people at Star Labs who kind of was helping Flash get back on his feet after he got struck by that the the, uh, the lightning. I don't know. That's. That's I thought maybe he was some type of mega human. Because if you look at him, when he opens up that tablet scroll thing, it, it, it says like, the what what was the year, 2024? 2024, and there's a date on a newspaper. Yeah, and so I'm guessing that has something to do with the future, maybe. I know I was reading something, people's posts on Twitter about it, and I, so I'm guessing part of the Flash universe, there's a character or something that has to do with time travel. So I think maybe they were hinting at Maybe that guy's gonna like from the future or something like that. The other thing I like that about the show is they left it wide open for other meta humans out there. They did. So I wonder if there's gonna be like maybe like five or more during the whole course of the season. Yeah, I think which is cool. I think the the cool thing about it is, uh, are you gonna you're gonna watch Arrow tonight? Uh, am I gonna be a little lost? Oh, yeah. we'll get into. It. I forgot about that. You have so to give me the rundown, man. I think when you watch Flash, it's very similar to like the layout of Arrow. Like they kind of they do a nice job of kind of uh, evening out, spacing out the villains and things like that. And I think you're right. That was a good point that they made yeah. there, how, where that that incident kind of gave all these people kind of those powers and stuff like that. I don't really know a lot about Arrow, but from what I gathered, watching them two interact yeah. in that scene. Is that one is like Arrow's very dark and gritty, and I feel like Flash is the opposite. He's more light and he's more optimistic about the future and whatnot. Really good point, and I think that's a cool thing about it too. Is it it keeps you coming back for both because Arrow, when it started out, he was kind of like what one thing you see with a lot of like superheroes is kind of what like they have that rule like they don't kill they mm-hmm. they all but Arrow did. I mean, he was like. He was. He kind of reminds me of Assassin's Creed, the guy from. Assassin's a little bit, yeah. <laughs> He's kind of scarred from um, his experiences. I mean, he kind of stopped trying to be that killer, and he he had a big battle. So, so is Barry Allen going to appear on Arrow? Yes, that is the thing. I think that they they nailed it. They did a really good job with that. Is they're going to intertwine with each other, the show. So that, Flash, that is pretty cool. Really cool, like. I got excited when I saw Arrow for the first time in that show, and then the, I think that interaction between the two of them setting that up in the first episode was really cool. Yeah, I just think that, like I said before, they're two totally different type of heroes. Yeah. And how I wonder how their character will develop like working with one another. And it's a cool combination, right? Because they're, they're yeah. so different. But at the same time, they're kind of like, they, they just work together. You I know? also like how they put a little love mix in there with uh, the girl. What's That's her name? One thing, Iris? Uh, his, yeah, I think so. I think that was I her name. I have her down here somewhere. Let's get that. And the one thing you'll say, I'll say this while you're finding that, is you, you find an arrow and you find a flash. That's a very big yeah, component Iris. to it. Iris, okay. She's a good actor, too. The person. Is there a love triangle? or There is definitely. That is a very Arrow? big part of Arrow, and you you can tell that they're trying to bring that out in Flash as well. Do you so think he's going to get the girl at the end? Barry Allen? Barry Allen. Because it's funny. He's, like, telling her the feelings in the beginning of the show. Oh, yeah, that's And she's right. like, yeah, I, I like you. I love you a lot as a friend. <laughs> he's like, what? I, I felt bad for Barry I've Allen. I've had that many times happen to me. <laughs> I, I don't I, know. I feel you, Barry. <laughs> Armand feels your pain, Barry Allen. Armand feels your pain. Maybe you are the Flash, Armand. I am the Flash. That would be pretty cool. You're Arrow. I could be Arrow. You're not very dark and gritty. You're more no. open and loving. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what uh what su- what superhero. Maybe I can't be Batman either because no, you're you know, not too dark. I don't know. We'll th- we'll, we'll think of something. You're Spider Man. That's not bad. I guess you're Spider Man. I could be Spider Man. I could. <laughs> I could be Spider Man. Web slinging all over the place. That'd be kind of cool. Are you more like a Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield, though? See, that's the thing. I really... I saw the end of The Amazing Spider-Man, and I really want to see Amazing Spider-Man 2. Did you see Amazing Spider-Man 2? That was the one with Jamie Foxx? Yeah. Yeah, it was alright. It was okay. I want to see them, but honestly, I don't know. I, I'm a big fan of the Tobey the Toby Maguire one. I thought Jamie Foxx's character was pretty cool. The electric guy? Yeah. He looks... That's the there one. was a sick scene in that in Times Square. I really want to yeah. see that one for him. He looked like he played a great villain. I don't know, though. I love... What what's your th- thoughts on the Spider Man? John Stanko, one of the big movie guys who used to be here, he graduated. Him and I would always have this debate. I mean, he liked he didn't like the Tobey Maguire Spider Man series. I thought it was well, phenomenal. They're two totally different characters. They are very. Tobey Maguire is more like that nerd, and Andrew Garfield's sort of a nerd in his own, but he's also a jock at the same time. Yeah, like he's a, a cool point. dude. So, it, I think Tobey Maguire is more true to the Peter Parker character. Definitely. When I think, like, 
when I, if I wanted a Spider Man for the big screen, I would go Tobey Maguire. 100%. The only thing I don't like about Tobey Maguire, I thought he did really good in the first two movies, but the third movie, yeah, when he went all when he had the Venom suit on the and Venom he was suit. acting like, you know, a box of galoop. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of weird, Spider Man three. I don't yeah, know. With, I, that was the one with Sandman, right? I mean, the scenes at the end, the battle scenes were great. Very good, yes. But some of the other stuff, it's like, oh, take this off. That's one thing, too. I, I wish they did a little better job of Venom in that one. Venom's like a really cool character. Venom is real cool. Really cool. I think they could have done a better job of kind of like putting that out there, how cool he is. I, uh, I like the scene in the church where he's ripping it off. Rip and it, that it gets is, on the other guy. That was really good. And then it jumps on that, that photographer guy. Yeah, really cool there. But moving back to kind of Flash, Arrow, the two negatives IGN did give was they said a visually cool but underdeveloped villain. I think that's a fair point last night. Yeah, that guy I mean, wasn't very good. He wasn't the great. But, I mean, it's one of those things where it's the first episode kind of laying the ground, and I think that the villains are definitely going to get better from this there. Anything but the special effects? Um, like what was the last one? Potentially too faithful to the source m material in some respects. I guess that's what I was kind of talking about earlier is it stayed very true to the comic. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, I think it was okay because, uh, I know for you and for me too, I mean, I've never been a big Flash guy. I, I don't really know that much about his, his uh, origins, but well, for now me, we do. <laughs> I, exactly. I was able to just pick up the first episode and just I'm in. Yeah, you carry know? myself through it. I enjoyed it. I thought it was good. I, it got me invested. It was funny because me and my dad were in the living room, and I was like, I have to watch this show. I mean, I, it was one of my previews. And remember in the last show, we were talking about our previews for shows to come yeah, in yeah. September? And Flash was on both our lists. And I told my dad, I was like, we have to watch this show because I have to talk about it on the show tomorrow. And he's like, all right. So we're watching it. He's like, wow, it's a good show. We got to watch the next one. Oh, no. So he liked it, too. Yeah, Joe. We That's awesome. Fan. <laughs> I'm glad because I was I was going to ask you what your dad thought about it because I wasn't sure if this is kind of did a your, show. Did your pops watch it? He did not. He oh, did not watch okay. it last night. Um, but well, you saw your brother liked it, so. Yeah. I was curious what your dad thought, though, because I, I was curious if is this show kind of appealing to our kind of age yeah, demographics like or 20 year olds. could anybody kind of pick up this mm -hmm. show and enjoy it? I said he enjoyed it. That's good to know. <laughs> That's I'm, I'm curious what he's going to think of Arrow. Let's start to kind of move into Arrow. So we've established we enjoyed Flash. Flash was a good, it was a success with us. I'm definitely in for the next episode. I'll be watching. But Arrow Season 3 starts tonight. And I talked about it a little bit last week. I mean, Arrow is probably my favorite show on TV right now. Really? In the summer, my brother came to me, kept bugging me. You got to watch this show. You got to watch this show. Season 1 was on Netflix. I sat down and I watched it. And I just, the next three weeks, I was hooked. I just yeah. I watched like three episodes a day. It was phenomenal. I love that show. I mean, part of the thing for me is I love the care. It's it's like Flash and Arrow. They're kind of built the same way. Good characters, good acting, uh, good stories. They have a lot of good uh, conflict in each episode. In season three, starting up tonight, I think, and I feel bad, Karma, because I really <laughs> want you to watch it. I wasn't thinking about that before. I'm gonna be lost. You're gonna be lost. So I don't. Do you have a Netflix account? Uh, yeah, my sister does. Okay, I was gonna say I, I would let you borrow mine because uh, you gotta you gotta get into Arrow. It's yeah, good. But I can't watch what is it, thirty two episodes over two years? No, yeah, you you got too much catching up to do. So I just want the I rundown. This, tell me how season two ended. Okay, season well, I'll start like season one. Kind okay. of the concept of is Oliver Queen is kind of the son of very very wealthy parents. I mean, it's I'm, assuming, I'm from, assuming Oliver Queen is. Is a uh, arrow, yeah. Arrow, okay. So he, his parents are extremely wealthy. They live in a place called Starling City. Where there's a lot of like corruption. It's kind of like um, it, it's it would be the equivalent like of a little, little bit like that. You know, you've got like the top of the top people who control everything, and then the bottom of the bottom. There's a lot of corruption and stuff in there. So Oliver goes on a, a trip, on a boat trip with uh, on to an island. Uh, on the ship, there's a shipwreck. With he's with his dad, and he gets stuck on an island for like five years, and that's where he learns the oh, skills man. to be the arrow. And his uh, dad, before he died on the, actually, you know, I'm kind of giving away a, lot, a little bit of spoilers here, but let's that's just say right. something happens to his dad, and he makes him promise that he will go back to his city and clean up the corruption and all the problems they've had there. So what is he, Simba? Is he Simba? I don't know. 
Regaining the circle of pride? Regaining the circle of pride. Um, so I would say that's kind of it. And then, like, season one progresses. You see more and more he's conflicted with, like, because if he, is he a killer? You know, is he really, like, kind of a, a hero? Yeah, I and got that drift from him. You see it kind of, like, really weigh on him a lot, like, the pressure of being the arrow. And I think that's a cool thing because even with, like, Batman and stuff, I don't know if they really hit the point, like, how much of a pressure this is and how it really takes away from their personal yeah, relationships and stuff like that. Yeah, like, you, they really make that a point in Arrow, and I think that's a really cool concept. In now, it. do you think the Flash will ever become dark and gritty like Arrow? That's a good point, because, I don't know, when I see Barry Maybe Allen... He might go through, like, a metamorphosis. Yeah. Barry Allen's just, like, I don't know, he's like a... Sun like a bag of sunshine, you know what I mean? Yeah, he's a like, great guy. He's great a great guy. guy. Great heart. Like it's just. I hope like, he gets the girl though. I really do. You're pulling for. I'm pulling, pulling for, him, for him. And see that that's the thing I like. You you can stay with Air Flash now because you've been there with the first episode. You can say Arrow. You've got too much catching up. There to was do. one sick scene when uh the weatherman guy was in the in the Mustang driving away and Flash oh, just yeah. and went right through the car. That it's was tough. horrific. And that was one of the better special effects. I, I agree. That was They did a nice job with getting that transition there, like yeah. getting him right in the car. And I was hoping that. I was like, please. I was really hoping that they would make that, like, it wouldn't take us too long. Like, we would be at the end of the episode and we're still waiting for to see him with his powers. But I thought that the pacing of the episode was really good. There was one question I wanted to ask you. You know how he's the Flash, like he's lightning on, on, on ground. Like, yeah. he's fast as heck. But the thing that I know is, is he allowed, is he able to slow down time itself? That's a good point. I is noticed he, that during the show because remember when the pizza dropped and the, the guys threw the keys? Yeah. And then there was another scene too. With the gun in the police station? Yeah. There was, yeah. You, you picked up on that? I, I did too. I think, I think somebody asked, he asked somebody about that and I think that their answer to him was, you're moving so fast that it just appears that everyone else is moving in slow motion. Mm -hmm. So I'm guessing he literally is that fast that... It's like when, he's almost all, he can predict things, sort it of. It kind of is cool like that. Like, he's so fast that things, everything else is like in slow mo When it's not really, but technically, I guess, yeah, it would be considered, he can freeze it, which is cool. Overall, though, a performance last Absolutely. night. Absolutely, I'm I'm all in on the show. I'm very happy that Armand is with me on the show. Um, but I'm curious to see what other people thought. It seemed like on Twitter last night the response was very good. So that's good to hear. CW is we're doing a nice job. I mean, you got Arrow, you got Flash now. They're building some credibility. They are. They are. So let's go on to the next thing on the slate. Uh, this morning, browsing IGN, looking for all the stories, and this is the Comic-Con special. So obviously this weekend with a movie coming out, you've got Comic-Con. Are you going to go to the theaters to see one of the big movies this weekend? You've got Dracula Untold. I think I've seen more previews for Dracula Untold. Watching oh my MLB god, Club. how much money do they pay in advertisements I, for this movie? It's, it's got to be a lot because i got to say, I, I've i seen this. I the, see it once every day. They promoted the heck out of this oh movie. Oh my god. I've seen, I, I, I think they I counted. They must think this is the real deal. Between the Dodgers and the Giants game last night, I probably saw this like four times, this advertisement. I like Luke Evans too. I think he's a good fit for Dracula. He is. He's the guy barred from uh, Lord of the Rings from The Hobbit. That's right. You know, he looks so And he's so also familiar. from Fast, Fast and Furious 6. Okay, he's nice. He's a bad guy. There you go. I, I didn't see that one. But been around. He's been around. He's been, he's been around. There you go. No, but the thing about Comic-Con, what I wanted to say is that the con is pushing forward and growing its television-based programming, and they're going to have a focus on Marvel Studios productions of Daredevil and CW's Arrow. That's what I've been hearing. Like the, the, there's going to be panels and stuff. I think my brother's there's going to There's a Daredevil show? I think there's there there's a Daredevil show co coming Is out. Is Ben Affleck in it? I hope not. <laughs> oh, did you see that movie? Yeah, it, it was. Uh, I still can't watch it because I heard how horrible. Like it was just like. I mean, a, they had some good guys. I mean, they had Colin Farrell. They had Michael Clark Duncan, Jennifer Gardner, Ben Affleck. That's the weird thing I'm thinking too. Is like. It, the thing you're seeing with like a lot of these shows coming out now is they're do they're they're trying to put like the smaller name like heroes out there like Daredevil's not like a no, huge yeah, name. Exactly. 
Um, Arrow wasn't a huge name, but they did a really good job with it. Flash was actually kind of a big name. Yeah, so Flash is a big name. He for is the Justice League. Um, but Daredevil's a weird one because I don't know. Do you know for that movie coming out in two years, the Justice League was it Justice League versus Marvel or something? Um, it's coming out in 2016 when Ben Affleck's supposed to be Batman. Oh, Bat Superman versus Batman. Super yeah yeah. But all the Justice League people are supposed to be in it. They are okay. Cause Ryan Gosling's supposed to be the Flash. Really? The last time I looked at IMDb, I mean wait, IMBD. Yeah. International movie. No, IMDb. I had it right the first time. International. Yeah, there you movie go. Movie database. I get my D's and my B's mixed up, right? It's all right. It's I'm all right. I'm not dyslexic. We're we're we're, <laughs> we're we're all with you. We're all with you. No, yeah. I had they. I read the character list and they said that Ryan Gosling was gonna be the Flash. I thought wow. that was very interesting to me. See, I don't know. I kind of like our new Barry. I do, yeah. man. I want him to play the Grant Flash. Grant Gustin. I want you to take uh, Stephen Amell, who plays Arrow. I want you to take our man who's playing Flash. What's his name? Grant Gustin. Grant Gustin. Grant Gustin and we Stephen Amell. You might grow Iris, too. Iris, too. Yeah, we'll get Iris in there. So <laughs> I wish you would watch with with uh, when you watch Arrow, when you get into eventually Felicity Smoke. Very, very cool character. If you like Iris. That is... They've got a weird right relationship, and I think that's one of the things they're really gonna try to go to in season three. People really want to so see how they're like one of those things like they love each other, but they're not with each other, sort of. I would say maybe that's a good point. It's kind of like that classic superhero dynamic, you know, like in Batman, where he's kind of like he, he does. And, and Spider Man's a good way to put it too. Like for a while, Peter MJ. Parker in MJ, you know, he was afraid that getting closer to her because of how dangerous his line of work was. So um, it's it's kind of different in air. I don't want to give. Too I feel much like they had that same thing with Flash because at the end of the show. When uh, when the father realizes who he is, he's like, I don't want Iris involved with it. Stay here, away. <laughs> that's a, actually that's a good point right there. And the cool thing where it's again you're going back. Flash and Arrow always going to come back up. Felicity is actually kind of she had a thing that's going a cool on. Name Felicity. Felicity Smoke is a very I, good I'm name. I'm think about that name for my child. <laughs> Felicity. <laughs> there you go, Armand. I didn't make children. <laughs> But Felicity and um, Barry Allen were kind of really had a very close relationship in um, in uh, Arrow season two, but then you've kind of got these hints dropped about uh, Arrow and Felicity as well. So I don't know, is there going to be kind of a power struggle there between Barry Allen and Arrow over her? We'll see in season three. Yeah, I don't know. I was looking at the previews for next week because you know, like when After the show's the three, yeah. over, they have like that minute. Segway for the next one. So then I was looking at it, and there's some blonde girl he's that, like kissing. That's that, Felicity. Oh, yep. man. Arrow's going to... Oh, man. They're going to duel it out. <laughs> Flash versus Arrow. I, that would be a good battle. You know who would be a good battle, Joe? Legolas Ooh, and Arrow. Legolas and Arrow. The two best archers there are. But then you could also make a case for Hawkeye. I, you just read my mind. See, that's why yes, we're Batman and Robin. MJ and Scott. Uh, that would be a... a Heck of a triple battle. Hawkeye on one side. No, I'm go I gotta go with Legolas. I'm sorry. Legolas. I gotta go. The Willing Realm. Bang, bang. You know, the the ability to climb up those gigantic elephant things as he showed exactly, man. is pretty and impressive. Though, he's not a superhero compared like the other two guys either. But I gotta say, I think I gotta give it to Arrow. Oh, just because God. of. The, no, don't say. Don't he's, finish the sentence. He's fought against guys like with with heavy weaponry and stuff like that. I just think when you look at Legolas, trying to tell me that the orcs, are <laughs> the orcs are impressive. You know, those elephants are big, big things. That is an impressive feat right there. But I gotta give Joe, you'd be shaking your boots if a little orc attacked you. Okay. I don't know the orc. Uh, here's what the, when, when I first watched the uh, the the um. The Battle of Helm's Deep, when it's really dark and the orc army, down shields, that down is staircases. A, yeah, that's a little intimidating. You know, if you're on, if you're in Helm's Deep defending against all those orcs, that's a little intimidating right there. Man, I'd be the Aragon that sequence and be like, "Let's go, Archers! <laughs> Waste them! Shoot underneath! What? Shoot underneath their armor? That's yeah. where their uh, where their uh, plates are the weakest. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. Great movie. There was actually a poster for the Five Armors thing. Uh, Five Armies, the new Hobbit we got, one. We gotta go. We gotta assemble the squad. We definitely gotta go. I gotta watch Desolation of Smog next. Oh so my heard... god, you never seen it? I did. Oh I... man, you have to see Legolas' scene on the river. Ooh. Oh boy. Oh no, man. If I watch that, that would that maybe make me push me more towards Legolas over Arrow? Oh yeah, do would. more, impre oh, yes, more impressive would. things. Oh man. Okay. Oh, there man. you go. You know, this is a good battle. I would definitely put Hawkeye last, just because. Nah, Hawkeye's last. Definitely. Hawkeye's kind of just like 
like the third wheel in the Avengers, you know. He's kind of just eighth there. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. He is like the eighth. Like, if you picked everybody in the Everyone's Avengers. Everyone's going to see Captain America, Iron yeah. Man, the Hulk. He's probably Thor. like the last guy you would probably pick. Even, no disrespect to him. Even Romanoff is better. Romanoff. Yeah, I, I agree. Romanoff. Oh, Romanoff is definitely better. She's so, so quick with it. <laughs> she makes uh, Hawkeye what he is. Without, yeah, without exactly. her, he'd just be like some... Some weird dude with a bow and arrow chasing fallen the Avengers. That's all he would be. <laughs> he'd be an, he'd be an uh, obsessive fan. <laughs> he would be an obsessive fan. Like, hey guys, can, like, can I come along? Captain America, turn around and acknowledge me. If not, I'm gonna shoot you my arrow. <laughs> <laughs> but um, we we're just talking about Dracula Untold though. So uh, do you want to hear the review from IGN? Oh yes, I do. I don't know if I trust them because I want to like this movie. They gave it a six point five. They said okay. I honestly agree with them, Joe. They I said think it's overhyped. Dracula Untold recast the famous vampire as a dark suit superhero it's fast-paced shallow fun they said dracula's powers are cool charles dance is creepy and conniving dracula fights an entire army those were their three pluses their two negatives were messy mythology and shallow characters and i think i don't know that seems like it's uh, a messy mythology what does that mean I guess what are trying to say? I guess the how they try to combine like the lore, the classic like Dracula the, the with Dracula this. story itself. Yeah. Well, there's so many versions of Dracula. There is. Van Helsing, you have Dracula. There's so many iterations of it yeah. and stuff like that. I agree. Um, but I I did like when you see in the previews, you see like him fighting that entire army, like the stuff yeah, like that comes is what. Bats. Like I'm not watching this movie to be like told like the most riveting Dracula tale of all time. Just show I'm surprised me. Cool. You like this movie because it's kind of horror, sort of in one way. Here you might not sleep tomorrow night, Joe. What, I don't know. Does it come out Friday? The, uh, Friday. The only movies that. I, I struggle like that with are like the Annabelle type things, the Conjuring type things. Those are like so this, demonic spirits. Demonic spirits is a good way to put it. Movies like that, I just can't yeah, watch. Dracula ain't gonna come attack you anytime yeah, soon. Dr- <laughs> I think if Dracula and I met, we would be cool with each oh, other. Yeah, he just bite your arm off. I think he'd just be like, I don't know. I think he'd just we, be like, yeah, Joe, give me your neck. I think we could. <laughs> I think we'd get along. But are I you, like Van Helsing. Are you better. A positive, B positive, yo? <laughs> you know, I don't even know. A B. <laughs> I'm kind of afraid to say. What's your blood it, type? What's my blood type? Are you Dracula, Armand? I don't know. I'm getting I a little. Uh, gotta watch my back here uh, on the morning Dracula. show. No, you're cool. You're um. What were we saying earlier on the show? You're Flash. I am Flash. You're Flash. You're Flash, and I'm Spider Man. Flash. We're Batman and Robin, MJ <laughs> and Scotty Pippen, a Flash and Spider Man. By the end of the show, we might be like twenty different people. We might. But that's okay. We just might. That is okay. Let's go to a break. You know, we've been going for a while now. When we come back, some more Comic-Con stuff. Maybe talking a little bit of sports, more entertainment overload. But thank you for staying tuned for our first segment, and we will be right back. You're listening to WICR, Iona College Radio. 